Listen, if you're into video game design, you are in the right place. I've got a brand new series coming at you for beginners for video game design in the Unity software package. So let's get going here. Let's not waste any time. Here we go. All right, here we go. We're talking about the Unity software package. If you haven't already seen my ReadyMaker videos, I would suggest starting there because that is a more beginner video game design software. So I'll link a video up at the top here and in the description. That way you guys can check that out if you're interested. I'm going to go through this pretty quickly, but if you want to skip ahead in the video because you already have it installed, then by all means, you're going to go to unity.com and hit get started. Go to individual and you can get a free personal version as long as you make less than $100,000 per year in the video game design space. So I'm going to hit get started. If you're a first time user, maybe you'd like to start here because it'll bring you through a game or two. But I'm going to hit returning users, check the box, download Unity Hub, install Unity Hub. Once Unity Hub is installed, double click on that to open it up. In projects, you'll see a list of your previous projects if you haven't already created one. If you have a project somewhere else on your hard drive and it's not picking up on, on your recent projects, you can hit add. You can go to new or the arrow next to new to select which version you want to use in order to create a new document. But if you haven't installed a version yet, we're going to want to go down to installs first. In installs is where the different versions of the software is located. If you don't have any yet, go to add and add which version you would like to use. The newest one while I'm shooting this video is 2020.2.1 F1. I like to stick with the most recent LTS version, which is long term support. What it means is that they're going to support that version for at least a couple years. The problem with downloading one version and making your game in that version and then upgrading it every time they have a new update is that sometimes the game is not always compatible with some of the changes that they make. So you're going to have to fix your game sometimes if you're moving from one version to another. So I like to use the most recent LTS and always create my files in there. Hit next and select the different modules that you would like to develop for. You definitely want Microsoft Visual Studio Community 2019. That's going to be where we do our coding. If you're going to follow me through this series, eventually we're going to get to the Oculus Quest and Oculus Quest 2 development. So you're going to want the Android build support with both Android SDK and NDK tools and OpenJDK. If you think that you're going to work on iOS apps or tvOS or Linux or Mac or anything like that, choose the one that you think you should add to. I usually leave Universal Windows Platform build support and Windows build support checked. And then hit next. Check the box and hit next and it will install that version. Important to note that this hub also has a learning area where you can learn different games or techniques that have been created by Unity. Under the community tab, if you have any questions that you're trying to answer, they have a blog, they have a Q&A, they have forums, and they have live help, which is pretty useful. But for us, we're going to go back to projects. We're going to hit the check next to new and choose the version of the software that you want to create a file in. Choose 3D for the game type in a file name and choose a location for where you want to save your files and then hit create. Sometimes it'll open up pretty quickly if it's a blank document. Other times it might take some time to load because you have so many things in your game. The more complex the game is, the longer the load time is, depending on your computer, of course. So let's talk about the user interface for a second. Under file, you can create different scenes. So if your game has multiple levels to it, then you can create multiple scenes. You can obviously save and open new projects. But you also have your build settings here where you can actually build and play your game on the device that you're developing for. We'll talk about that more later. Under edit, it's important to note that that's where your project settings and preferences are. Under assets, game object, and component, all of the things within those three menus can be done other places. So we're going to talk about that in the other locations. You have a set of tools here, which we'll talk about once we actually put something in our game space. You have the hierarchy, which is going to show every game component that's within your game. In the hierarchy, you already have a main camera and a directional light. The camera, if you click on that, is going to show you the camera preview. The directional light is going to be the sun, and it's showing you the angle that it's casting down, which can be changed. This is your scene view, where you're going to see and build your game. Above the scene view, you do have a couple different options up here. Important ones to note, but I won't go over all of them. There are camera options up here, like if you wanted to change the field of view of your camera. You can change from shaded wireframe to wireframe to shaded. The difference being that shaded, let's just create a 3D object real quick. By the way, zooming in and out in the game space there in the scene view is just up and down on the scroller. 
so shaded is just filled in with a solid wireframe is so that you can see the wireframe through it kind of like a CAD software and shaded wireframe is going to be a solid shade but it's going to also show you the wireframe of the object it's nice so that you can see the back corners you can hit play up here when this is blue that means that you're in your game playing and I'll tell you something right now don't hit play and then start building in your scene it'll show up in the game but when you're done hitting play it won't save everything that you've changed and it won't save what you've created in the game that's more of like a temporary creation so make sure that once you hit play you know you play your game and then when you're done you actually stop it that way you can go back to building the right way you have a toggle to go between 2d and 3d views you have a little gizmo up here that allows you to see the different sides. So if I clicked Y, it would show me the Y side, X and Z. You can click down here to change from perspective view to ISO view. And you can also toggle the game audio on and off. The other things are not really worth mentioning at this time, but we will get to them in future videos. So on the right side, you have the inspector, which is going to tell you all the different properties about your objects that are in your game. So as an example, I created this cube. When I click on this cube, you'll see it's highlighted and it'll show you all the different options that you can change and all the properties about that cube. For example, not only can I grab these different arrows to move this in the game space, but I can also directly change the values of the position by entering in numbers in the X, Y, and Z field. 10, 15, and 2 is going to send that cube up there. The rotation, you can change the rotation. This is looking for degrees. So in the X field, if I put 45, it's going to rotate it on the 45 of the X. The scale, if you'd like to make it bigger, you can make it 2, tab, 2, tab, 2, using tab between the fields, or 10, 10, 10. In the inspector, you can change the material that's on there, the lighting, and the way that it casts and receives shadows. You can change the collider on it, which is basically the way that it's going to interact with other objects in the game. So if my collider is a box collider and the size of it is the size of the cube that I've created and I have a guy that's running across the game and he runs right into this box, he's going to stop right when he hits the box. That's the collider. By checking is trigger, that means that it's going to trigger some kind of event. So let's say this game is Paperboy and I want the mailbox to have a box collider and I put is trigger on it and I throw a newspaper at the mailbox. Not only is it gonna hit the mailbox, but it's gonna also do an effect like playing a sound if I code it that way using the box as a trigger. At any time, without hitting the plus button, you could look at the game view by just clicking this tab down here. The console is meant for error checking. So if something is wrong in your game, you'll see a little message down here that tells you what's wrong with it. In the project menu is where you're gonna have all of your assets and your scripts and your materials and so on. In the assets folder is where you're going to put other folders for things that you're trying to keep neat in your game, like scenes. Or if I right click and go to create folder, I can make that where my materials are going to go. Or right click create folder where my scripts are going to go. In scripts, I can now right click in here and go to create C sharp script. And you can name that script whatever you'd like. We'll talk about scripting in a different video. It's important to note that if I double click on this script right now, it's going to open up Microsoft Visual Studio in order to edit your script. Under scenes is where you can create other scenes, like the different levels in your game. Under materials, we can put different materials. So if I right click here and I go to create material, I can name that material grass. And on the right side now, when I have that selected in the inspector, I can change the color or material or how smooth it is or if it's metallic. So for this one, if it's gonna be grass, I'm gonna throw a green color on there. Let's go back to my object for a second. If I click on that object and change the size of it to be something a little bit shorter and I'll make it a little bit wider and a little bit longer and then I zoom out, you can see that this could technically be a platform that you build your game on. You can also right click over here and go to 3D object and go to terrain. I can apply this material now to anything that I've created just by dragging it onto there. Or when you're selected on the object, you can go into the inspector tab, go to element zero, the little icon next to that, and you can find grass and double click on it in order to put grass on that object. So you can do it three ways. You can also grab this grass material and drag that onto the cube, and that'll put it on there as well. I'm gonna go ahead and erase everything I have right now. And you can do that by clicking on the object and hitting delete on the keyboard. 
or you could right click on this object in the hierarchy and hit delete. If you ever erase something that you didn't want to erase or you make some kind of mistake, you can hit control Z on the keyboard and that'll bring back those options. You can also go to edit undo and edit redo. The last thing I want to show is the different tools that you see up at the top here. If I right click and create another 3D game object like a cube, and I'll take the position and put that back to zero, zero, zero. By clicking on the hand tool, that allows you to click on the screen and move it around so that you can pan between different objects. The move tool is gonna allow you to access these different axes so that you can move these different arrows to different locations. The rotate tool is gonna give you three options for rotating, whether you wanna rotate on the red axis, the blue axis, or the green axis. But keep in mind that these numbers are not going to come out even increments. They're going to come out to anything that you rotate it to. So if it needs to be a specific degree, you're going to want to do that up here where it says rotation in the inspector. In the hierarchy, I can edit the name of any object by clicking on it and then right click and going to rename. You can also duplicate or delete the objects. You can also rename it by clicking on it. And in the inspector tab, the very top bar up here is for the name. You can also click on your object and hit the scale tool in order to scale it in any direction you would like. It's important to note that if you wanted the center of the cube to be at zero, 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 by scaling it, it doesn't change that. It'll still stay at zero, 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 which means when I drag up, this bottom layer is gonna go below zero. When I drag to the right and left, it's gonna go outside of zero, and the red is going to be front and back of zero. If I wanted to move this small object on top of this large object, one of the ways I can do that would be to just type in the correct numbers, but the other way is to hold V on the keyboard, which stands for vertexes, and you can grab it from any corner of the cube that you would like. And if you click and hold on it, you can bring that up and snap it to another one. And now the two are on top of each other. And the last thing I want to talk about is creating empty objects, which work kind of like a folder. Let's say you were going to put all your trees in there and let's just say that these cubes were trees, I could change the parent-child relationship of them, which means I can drag it onto the trees and it'll put them in a little folder of trees, a folder that I can collapse if I don't wanna see all of those objects and a folder that I can click on in order to move all of those objects together or to scale them together or so on. So listen, that's it for this very first video. I really appreciate you guys watching. If you like my content and you want to follow the rest of my series, like the video, subscribe to the channel, and maybe even click that bell so that you can see each video as they come out. I'd also like to know where all of my followers are from. If you could comment and tell me where you're located, I think that that would be pretty cool to find out. I know that I have people in the Philippines and Malaysia and India and all these cool locations. I'd really like to know where everyone else is from. So tell me in the comments. And that's it. So I appreciate you guys watching and I'll see you in the next one. Later.